Good morning, afternoon, or evening to all of you. Um, it's great to have you in this session where we'll be looking at fearless visibility and how it may be the secret to improving uh, collaboration. Uh, it's now time to introduce uh, my colleague, Sofia Neto, who will be delivering the talk. Sofia's goal is to help others get the most out of technology and therefore unleash the potential uh, of every team. She's a mother of three. She keeps quite busy here. And um, in the free time, she is actively engaged in social innovation uh, movements, besides being head of uh, ecosystem experience at uh, uh, Explant. Uh, and having more than 10 years uh, experience uh, with tools like Jira, Confluence, and so forth. She is also founder of Donate IT, a nonprofit community that helps others um, uh, in pro bono project, tech projects. Curious, passionate uh, for learning. Uh, her main interests are teamwork, collaboration, uh, knowledge management, agile, DevOps, social innovation, and gender equality. Uh, almost everything that is out there, Sophia is involved in. So Sophia, welcome. Uh, also, once again, welcome to the audience here. And um, let's hear what you have to say, okay? Uh, thank you, thank you, Helder, for your kind presentation. So um, hello, everyone. Um, I hope that uh, you are uh, okay. Uh, at this uh, strange time, I I prefer to be live with you and uh, meet you in person, but uh, that's what we have right now. So, so let's start. Um, so my name is Sophia, as Elder introduced me, and um, I'm a Classic Solution fan for more than 15 years. Um, yeah, I know it's a lot, uh, but uh, once you meet uh, Jira, uh, I think you cannot live without it again. And uh, right now I'm helping our customers and our partners to get the most out of X-Ray with the best experience possible. So uh, as Elder said, I, I love to learn and share. So reach me out if you want to share uh, about uh, quality, collaboration, teamwork, DevOps, Agile, and also my personal project that it's about uh, technology for uh, social, social impact. So uh, just to wake up those that are in Europe <laughs> or that are in US, um, let's first begin with an exercise. So uh, please think um, if you work or if you think that you work in a, or an organization with a collaborative mindset. Uh, I'm not talking about your specific team. I'm talking about the whole organization from finance to operations. Uh, and for now on, when I say team, I mean the whole team and not only the three or six people that you usually work uh, daily. So go to your uh, Q&A uh, area. You have there a, a pull question. So answer if you think that you are uh, working in a collaborative mindset. So let's let's wait. A, so a little minutes to, to see your questions and have time to, to decide. I'm going to ask that again in the end of the session, but right now, before we start explaining what I mean by a collaborative mindset, just do this exercise. So why am I asking this? Uh, well, I think that uh, we all want to be, uh, we all, all want to be part of a team where we don't have only the visibility of our work uh, and know only what we know uh, that happens in our environment to a team where we have a bird eye view, when you see, where you see the old value stream from business to customer feedback. So we want to move from teams that work from silos uh, to teams that collaborate, that work together for a common uh, purpose, that is bringing value to the customer. We want to change uh, from people that don't share their knowledge, that feel that it's uh, their precious, to teams that uh, knowledge sharing is part of their DNA. 
we want to go from teens uh, that keep their darkest uh, secrets, opinions, mistakes, failures locked inside uh, a, an unknown vault to teams that open the door uh, to share failures uh, and are not afraid uh, to share their dark side and are willing to learn it from it. Does this sound familiar to you? Uh, maybe you've heard about this uh, when you study or listen to a talk or even read a book about DevOps. Uh, so this is not that easy. It takes a lot of bravery. Uh, so it takes a lot of bravery to share your work and let the others know what you are doing, to uh, let other uh, let your own goals behind and work uh, to pursue the, the team goals, uh, to share what you know, invest time in sharing it uh, to others, taking the risk of being dispensable and open the door to failure uh, and have the audacity to make your own dark opinions hurt and take the risk of being uh, discredited. But this is what it takes to build trust. Uh, this is what it takes to be uh, fearless visible. And uh, why do you need to build trust? Uh, so one of the characters of my of one of my favorite books, um, just a personal note, I love to read, so you will hear a lot about, about books in this presentation. Uh, so this character from the Phoenix Project, I think that has described it uh, perfectly, uh, because trust is what it takes to, to build a successful team. So there is no successful team without uh, trust. So that's when the magic happens. But the problem is, I don't know if you heard about this Atlassian study on um, uh, open teams. So uh, at this study, I think it was about uh, two years ago or three years ago that they released this study. So they realized that 78% don't fully trust their teammates. So this is something that uh, worries me, is a lot of people that don't trust their teammates. But only with openness and trust is possible to create a collaborative environment. So let's try to understand uh, how can we crack this code? How can we crack the code for, for collaboration? So, and um, before we start, uh, just uh, another uh, interesting note, uh, quality is a team sport. This is a quote from uh, Lisa Crispin. So if you are working to build quality, um, you need to have a really uh, true collaborative uh, mindset because testers uh, have an important role breaking silos uh, because quality is not one team domain and uh, having the whole team sharing responsibility for the quality of the systems they build uh, not only improves the outcomes, but also accelerates learning. So testing must be collaborative. So testing tools should, not, should put developers, testers, and operations in the same tool uh, to help them uh, collaborate. Um, maybe you've, if you are a tester or if you work in uh, quality assurance, you uh, may have found this image before. I think that it, it represents uh, really uh, in a nice way that uh, testing is not only done in the end of the process, but it's done through the whole uh, cycle. So, um, and you have to have testing everywhere uh, if you are uh, if you want to bring quality, quality in. So uh, how can we build trust? Okay, so we, we've learned that, okay, we need to be open. We need to, to have trust in our teammates in order to achieve collaboration. So how can we build a trust? How can we build an open team? So I will share with you in the next minutes, uh, some ideas to build trust and to empower uh, open team. There's a lot of things that you can do that are really obvious and there's um, 
others that are not so obvious. So feel free to use the chat to, to share your own practices, your own opinions. I would love to hear from you and learn what you have done in your team to, to achieve trust and to achieve an open team. So please share it. So the first one, uh, it's to make your work visible. So this is the first DevOps uh, flow is where you should start. Uh, and if you haven't done it this yet, please do. This will change your team's life. And this is really, really simple. But um, I've, 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 I've worked with a lot of teams that uh, have been start to do this and we're trying to do, for example, automation and stuff like that, but uh, they fail this first one. Uh, and so if you haven't done this before, um, you should do it right now. So um, there are several ways to, to make your work visible. Um, this image is from a book from uh, Dominique de Grandis uh, that it's called Make Your Work Visible. Uh, this book has a lot of tips that you can uh, use. Um, and uh, for this example, for example, it's a physical board uh, where you can see the flow of the work. And, um, you can do this physically, uh, really you can, um, but um, I would love to hear if you were doing this physically, how you managed during the COVID time. Uh, so share with, with us your, your experience if you, if you have this, because I, I think that the physical board has these advantages, but during COVID, uh, I don't have no idea how teams managed to overcome this. So it can be like, a physical board like this, or even a regular spreadsheet. So this is my person example. So as Elder uh, shared, I have three kids and sometimes it takes a lot of logistics to get everything done. So my husband forgets easily what we agreed uh, previously to, to do. So I built this list uh, just to remind him when, he's, when it's, it's, it's time to pick up kids from school, or to prepare dinner or whatever. So uh, it, it was like turning our work as family visible. And this helped us a lot with uh, the logistic. Or you can use Trello. Um, well, I love Trello. I, I use it a lot for uh, my personal uh, things. So I like to be engaged with a, a lot of things. Uh, this Trello, for example, is from my personal project that it's uh, Donate IT. And um, it's super easy to use and uh, it, it is uh, really uh, fun to use as well. Or if you need a more complete solution, you should be using something like Jira, right? So uh, Jira enables you to provide visibility across the entire team. And if you are a tester and um, you should be sharing the information with your team, ideally inside of Jira. So this makes a huge difference if you are using Jira for test management or if you are using another tool for, for test management. So um, to achieve this kind of visibility, um, I would definitely recommend you to use X-Ray. So this is a test management app uh, for Jira that can help you make your work visible in so many ways. For example, you can share the test cases with the whole team uh, and therefore promote understanding and how the system should work technically and in terms of business, because if you do the acceptance tests inside uh, Jira, you can also uh, help in this, in this part. Uh, you have the full traceability uh, that will uh, let you understand which tests are uncovered, um, if there are any bugs, any defects for a specific requirement, and uh, you can have different views depending on the release or in, or in the environment. Um, you can really have a full traceability inside X-Ray. So uh, also you can make the requirements uh, status visible. So uh, does the requirement has a test that it's associated or not? Did this uh, requirements fail during the last test executions or not? This will provide you real-time information to developers and operations and uh, will help you make decisions about releasing or not into production. 
So uh, let me share with you a real story uh, from my uh, previous time as an Atlassian consultant. So I was an Atlassian consultant for more than, I think, five years, something like that. And I had the opportunity to work with a European agency. And uh, the goal was to bring the whole entire uh, value stream activity into Jira. They were using several tools at the time without this ability of full integration and full visibility. So I've worked with several teams during that project, including the service validation team that was the one responsible for testing the, the systems. So uh, by the time we were done with the project, visibility was tremendously improved. Uh, testers and managers were able to track requirements and coverage by just looking into a nice dashboard. So no more Excel reports or spreadsheet reports or Word reports or whatever to let everyone know what was happening uh, at the, the system. Okay, I'm telling you this story about Jira and X-Ray. Um, and I also told you that I'm an Atlassian fan, but don't get me wrong. So a tool, it's just a tool. Uh, what matters is uh, what you do with that tool because you can increase visibility only with a whiteboard and a pen. Uh, so the tool is not the thing that you should be focusing right now, but uh, getting this practice live. So make your work visible is super important and it's the, the first step that you should be doing. And uh, something to um, just warm up. So when you make your work visible, you also increase respect and trust from others. So um, unfortunately, people tend to uh, gain more respect uh, if they know what you are doing. And if they don't know, they tend to assume that you are not doing anything. So that's something that also can help you personally, uh, as Kim Scott uh, stated in this uh, incredible book that it's radical candor. So uh, the second tip is to give uh, free access to information. And um, this may sound a little bit scary. Uh, of and of course, if you are working in a regulatory um, market and you need to go by rules and you may have some constraints about this, but uh, when you give free access to information, when you share um, information, you are actually caring about your team. So sharing is caring. And if you are able to think with whom can you share this information? Who might have done this before? Who can inter interchange information? Who can I ask for help? Uh, you, are, you, are, you are building connections. Uh, you are improving trust and openness. And this is something that starts with you. Uh, there is no excuse if you, if you don't do it, uh, because if you want it, you have to live it. So you must be an influencer. You should start this today. Uh, and if you do it, uh, others will follow you, believe me. So some ideas to start uh, doing this. Uh, for example, create the open door management uh, meetings. Uh, are you bold enough to do this? Uh, have you done it before? Please share in the chat. Uh, we would love to, to hear your experience about this. Um, and now that we are most most uh, are mostly working remotely. Um, I think this could be a little bit more difficult to accomplish. But uh, for example, you can invite everyone to the meeting and uh, let them join the room um, and start and, and start engaging in the discussion. Another example, for example, is something that we do uh, at X-Ray. That it's the breakfast club. So. Uh, before COVID, we, we used to gather the team around food, pick a subject and discuss it. During COVID, we do this remotely. So we grab a coffee and have a discussion about something. It could be something related to work or not. So Paul Courtney, that it's a knowledge management specialist, once told me that 
nothing brings people uh, together like food. Uh, amazing conversation can happen around food. And respecting my Portuguese traditions, I cannot agree more. Uh, we love to uh, discuss and talk around, uh, around food. So uh, the third uh, tip to build trust in openness is to embrace diversity. And uh, when I talk about diversity, uh, I'm not only talking about different genders, cultures, or beliefs. Um, I'm also talking about different personalities. Uh, so having different points of views not only increases the possibility to get it right, but also increases trust. And again, uh, the Atlassian uh, open study uh, helped us understand this a little bit better. For example, when you, when you are working in a diverse environment, people achieve faster results. They are more happy, uh, feel that respect is important to the team's uh, success. So tips to bring, uh, to embrace diversity uh, is to do, for example, a, a fun exercise that it's called the devil's advocate. So you, sh you can nominate someone uh, that during the discussion would be, would be fo focused on arguing uh, in the contrary direction of the rest of the team. So he cannot agree with you. He will challenge you. Another tip to uh, promote uh, trust and openness is to uncover failures. And in DevOps culture, it's essential to learn from failures and to conduct experiments uh, in order to achieve mastery. So learning from failures can be something that it's part of your testing activities. Uh, testing has a huge role in uncovering failures and all the unknowns of the system. So um, also testers are used to deal with bad news. So uh, learning from failures is something that doesn't scare them at all. If you are able to have a, a culture of safety where it's safe to fail, uh, you will lead to full visibility and uh, knowledge of the defects that are uh, discovered from all types of tests. So being safe to fail is a characteristic of the high performing teams and is essential to, to innovation. So in this culture of safety, testing is no longer perceived as an unpleasant activity, but it's a learning activity. And um, testing has a great role in increasing trust. Uh, delivering value to the customer is more than delivering it fast. It's all about quality. So as uh, Lisa Crispin advocates, the, the state, uh, she states that DevOps is about building, building a quality culture. And um, if you are doing this, you are going to create a uh, mastery. So there is a very well-known uh, story about a manager um, at an IT company that committed a huge mistake uh, that cost us millions of dollars to the company. And he went to the CEO and uh, to offer uh, his resignation. And the answer was something like that. No way, I've invested millions of dollars for you to not make this mistake again. So I will not let you go. I do love this story because I think it explains perfectly what is a safety uh, culture? What should a company should be in terms of safety and be free to fail and recover? So some te techniques that you can use to promote this is, for example, to uh, do postmortems. Uh, so after an incident, it can be tech or not. For example, I did that uh, in the past with a sales incident. Um, and you can, for example, do this kind of report and share the learnings uh, after uh, the incident, try to understand what happened, uh, what you, you should have done uh, different and what you have learned from it and how you're going to change the system or the process in order to um, avoid this, this uh, problem again. 
Another fun exercise is to write a letter as you were the defect, as you were the, the bug that you have found if you're a tester. Uh, you should be telling your team how did you manage to survive. Uh, you should be saying goodbye with love because soon you'll be dead. So this is a fun exercise that you can do as a tester. So why is this important? I'm talking a lot of uh, talking about improving collaboration for a long time, but you may wonder why this is important. So. This is important because we want to create value to our customers sooner with better quality and safety with the less pain possible uh, for our customers and for our team uh, mates. So this need to be balanced uh, each other out. So you cannot push sooner by reducing better and happier. And this is the heart of the DevOps culture. Before wrapping up, uh, let's talk a little bit more about speed. Um, you may think that DevOps is focused on velocity and you need to automate everything to, in order to achieve DevOps. Uh, even if automation have a big place, uh, for example, in testing, it's not all. So, you will not solve your problems by only automating tests. We, you will not solve them if you are, uh, if you are not enables of quality. So you need to bring your team to invest in building quality in. So we need to focus on quality to go faster in the long run. So this is a, another quote from Lisa Crispin. So going faster, building trust and collaborate to generate value are definitely part of the DevOps culture. But we are talking a lot about benefits as a team, but there's also a lot of benefits as individuals. So individuals feel more respected, feel more engaged and they are willing to, to learn and to improve uh, all the time. And uh, lasting collaboration takes time, uh, takes teams and individuals effort. Uh, we must focus on uncover mistakes and failures, listen and sharing and being respectful. And to do this, it takes bravery again. It takes to be fearless, visible. Are you not convinced yet? Um, you may wonder, okay, okay, but why should I do this? Well, it's not a matter of being agile or being DevOps uh, or just being trustworthy. It's a question of, of survival. So Charles Darling, uh, I think that put this perfectly, only the ones that learn to collaborate uh, were the ones that prevailed. So if you want to survive, you must be now understanding how you can uh, work better as a team, how you can improve collaboration. So um, thank you for your time. Before we get into the Q&A, um, I've had to this presentation some books recommendation. As I said, I love to read. Um, and also, if you want to share books, articles, people to follow about collaboration, uh, please feel free to use the chat. Um, I personally uh, haven't found a specific book that talks specifically about collaboration. Uh, there's a lot of books that talk about that. Uh, maybe I will write one someday, I don't know, but um, let's, let's let, let me share with you some books that I used to, to inspire to this uh, to this talk before there's a lot of ones you can uh, take a, a screenshot right now or just uh, review the presentation uh, in the end to get these references um, and uh, please share with me if you have some information if you want to share more about collaboration using your uh, Q&A uh, box please do it and um, 
thank you for your time. Let's hit to the Q&A, Elder. Great, um, Sophia. Also, by the way, in terms of uh, the polls, um, I can tell you that I was surprised that um, all uh, poll answers uh, said yes when asked, uh, do you think your team has a collaborative mindset? So uh, very interesting here. Uh, also, before we get into any questions and answers, let me state that um, I understand your husband when he forgets or you say he forgets some chores because I do the same thing. We do not forget. We actually postpone them. And it's just not aligned with your expectations, okay? <laughs> so so um, uh, in terms of uh, questions that are popping up, let me pose you one directly here. Um, very interesting talk. And thanks a lot uh, again, Sophia, for that uh, um, presentation. Um, but can you give me an example of uh, your experience where visibility um, can actually increase the team's productivity? Yeah, I think um, I have a, a very nice experience uh, in a project uh, during uh, my Atlassian consultancy uh, times that was a big hotel company. And um, what happened was they were using uh, mostly email uh, to run their work. And um, the manager uh, didn't have any kind of visibility about the amount of work uh, that the team was dealing with. And when we end up um, the, the project uh, using Jira, of course, and Service Desk, I think it was at the time Service Desk, um, the manager was completely surprised and uh, how the team managed that kind of amount of work. And as we were able to use automation, um, the manager was able also to see, okay, I need to work more on automation in order to uh, improve my team's productivity. So she, um, it was a, a, a manager that understand perfectly that, okay, I have, now that I have this visibility of the amount of work, I know that I need to make my team a, a life better and that increased uh, productivity. And people were able, for example, to um, do tasks or leave tasks that were not that fun to do, like classification and stuff like that. And we're able to work in, in other kinds of tasks. Good, excellent. Nice and interesting uh, uh, example there. And uh, another question that popped up here is um, from our audience, uh, how would you try uh, to collaborate with teams that are spread throughout the world. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a tricky one. And during the pandemic, I think that the, that challenges a lot. So we at X-Ray, uh, we are spread around the world. And uh, for for a long time, most of the, the people that uh, work directly with me, for example, were around uh, the world and that brings a lot of a lot of uh, challenges uh, especially if you are in different time zones so a first tip if if you are working in different time zo zones you need to find uh, an hour that works for everyone uh, to meet daily uh, because you need to know the people that you are working with take time to talk about things that are not work related because you need to understand this, the, the people that you work with. Um, and um, I, I really love one, um, one statement that King Scott uh, did at the book Radical Candor that I referenced before, that um, it is your job as a boss to care about the people that you work with. So to take time to invest personally. So you should do uh, regular meetings at a time that works for everyone. And you should practice a lot uh, information sharing. Uh, use, for example, a tool like Confluence to, to share the information of the work that you are doing. Um, that's a, a great way to, to promote collaboration. People can look to, the, to what you have published and then they can comment and then, then can change it and contribute to make it, to make it better. 
Cool. Okay. I certainly hope that answers uh, your question, Derek. And um, now one from uh, João, someone who I believe we know. Uh, you mentioned the European agency in your presentation that moved uh, to Agile and Jira. Mm -hmm. What were their main difficulties and what are were their uh, outcomes? Well, so the biggest problem was to um, share information across the old value system. So they were using different tools, uh, one tool for testing, another tool for requirement management, another tool for, um, uh, I don't uh, a lot of, for, for example, incident management, they were using so many tools. And what happened was that uh, each team that was working on one specific tool had no idea what was happening in the other team. So they were struggling with uh, bottlenecks, they were struggling with uh, loss of productivity, uh, really. And um, the major outcomes was full visibility, was, for example, to reduce the waiting time so uh, they know the, after using jira and especially x-ray the service validation team were aware of the amount of work that was about to come to to their team and they were uh, able to uh, share with the developers on real time what were the defects that they they have found and the developers were able to correctly immediately and uh, this was a huge def difference because before X-ray in Jira, they needed to use reports in, in um, uh, documents, Word and spreadsheet to send uh, to the developers. And that would take a lot of time, more time than using, than using Jira in X-ray. Yeah, of course, of course. That makes a, a lot of sense. And um, let me ask you also a question, since I am a proud advocate of uh, X-Ray, our, our solution, um, and since we're also sponsoring the event here, what do you think um, X-Ray brings uh, to this collaboration and visibility aspect in order to promote visibility? Okay, I think that X-Ray has a huge uh, role and um, it really embraces the DevOps uh, culture because X-Ray uh, helps you to um, see quality as a team sport. So you, if you are using X-Ray, you can share with the developers the, the test cases that you are um, writing. You can, for example, if you work with customers outside your company, we did this a lot with X-Ray uh, as an Atlassian uh, consultant project uh, because we used, for example, X-Ray with our acceptance tests. So what we did is as a team, we tested the system and then we created a new test execution for the, the customer and the customer was able to use X-Ray uh, to test the, the system again. And we have this full visibility at the requirement if it was failing or not. So this is something that you can bring everyone uh, to, to the tool and um, bring everyone to build quality from uh, you as a tester, you as a developer, or even the customer giving you the uh, feedback in real time. So that's a really huge uh, difference. Uh, if you are trying to embrace DevOps, you should be worrying of bringing this uh, notion of quality from during all the process, uh, from the beginning into the end, and with this continuously feedback loop where you are always improving your, your system. Sophia, I'm now even more an advocate of X-ray. <laughs> anyway, Ray I think Dollar. this... <laughs> we are reaching the end of our session, people. I'd really, really like to thank you all for, for being here with us today. Very interesting topics that the Sifri brought forward. Uh, very interesting questions also that we hope um, were answered. And um, I would really like to um, uh, hope that the, this session has been of value to you. 
Now, Sophia, you do have uh, some last statements regarding uh, upcoming uh, ev <laughs> event sessions and so forth. So before yeah. dropping off, and at least from my side as a moderator, I really enjoyed it, but I'll pass it on to you once again. Okay, so just to, to finalize this first, uh, now that you learn a, a little bit more about collaboration, uh would you keep the same the same answer that you did in the beginning of the session do you uh still feel that you are working in a collaborative environment or do you need to bring these practices to your team and improve and that's one thing that i would love to hear from you uh, at the chat and uh if you have any question if you want to discuss uh with me you can uh, um, you can set up a one on one at our uh, virtual booth. You can send me an email, and um, let's let's share your, our learnings and uh, make collaboration a practice, not only uh, at our teams but as a, a, an old system. So as Atlassian fans, for example, let's do it. And uh, thank you, thank you for your time. Uh, just. Uh, I hope that you are enjoying the event and uh, keep learning and sharing with uh, the rest of the, the day.